from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2016. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, and this is the VTUG 2016 Winter Warmer. It's the 10th year of the show, third year of having theCUBE here, and no better way to be at a user group than to talk to one of the users themselves. Happy to have on the program for the first time, Neil Reardon, who is the AVP of Information Systems and Technology for Central One Federal Credit Union, local company here in uh, uh, the New England area. Neil, thanks mm. for joining us. No problem, thanks for having me. All right, so, so Neil, uh, start us out. Tell us a little bit about your background, your role, and uh, for those that don't know, Central One Federal Credit Union, tell us a little bit about the organization. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I've been in technology close to 20 years, I think over 20 years, I don't, you know, if I add my months up right, but um, basically been doing IT, um, soup to nuts, help desk, started help desk, and then working my way up to, to management now. So, you know, I'm 16 years in on Credit, in credit union land, so to speak. So this is my fourth credit union that I've been at. So this what, you know, we're, we've been around since 1952. Um, started as a New England electric, um, you know, mass Massachusetts electric workers. And um, then they, we went federal in 1998, I believe, to be a federally chartered credit union, which means we have the Fed that governs us. So we have to make sure that we're up to snuff with, the, with most of our, our uh, offerings Okay, so, so Neil, how many locations do you guys have? Sketch out for us a little bit what your, your IT staff looks like. Okay, so we have uh, four brick and mortar branches. Um, obviously we're, we're online with online services, mobile services, um, and we have a very small staff. We, we actually just hired our second help desk person, so there's, including myself, four of us that, that handle um, about 100 end users, probably 150 end points, I guess, as far as um, desktops go, and and um, you know, it, it's there's always a challenge as to to how do we secure that for our members, and you know they expect that of us. So that's why it's you know it's always a a, a crazy thing to 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 try to tackle. All right. So the it, more it, more the merrier. And what technology domains fall under your purview? Um, everything, I yeah. guess. Anything that runs on a computer yeah. or electricity, I guess, um, <laughs> falls under me. I, I think you know the phone system, the you, you know the the networking, the the storage, the um, the desktops, all that stuff, as well as the other half of me um, is data operations. Okay. So it's all the day-to-day -day processing. So. I know right away when stuff isn't working. Yeah, uh, so okay, that, that, you, you talk about the, the, some companies, one of the challenges that they have is like, oh, well I've got this group won't talk to that group, you just have to have the, the two sides of yourself and everybody involved. You know, you, you don't have some of those oper organizational issues, I guess. No, it's, a, it's more of an internal, Incredible Hulk type battle, <laughs> I guess, uh, that, that we I get into. All right, but so, so uh, can you sketch, tell us a little bit about uh, kind of your, your infrastructure, what do you have, uh, you know, what, what kind of virtualization, compute, server, network? All right, so uh, a couple years ago, we virtually P to V'd everything, um, 30 physical servers, now we're at 85 virtual servers in just a couple years, um, we, we actually, um, we reduced our, our footprint by, by choosing SimpliVity OmniCubes. So we went from two and a half physical racks to 4U. Wow. So that was actually, um, you know, from a, just a, a massive amount of heat generated out of that one area that we went from 60 plus power supplies to, you know, six, eight, because we needed, we had like, you know, a physical domain control, that kind of thing. So it wasn't just the two OmniCubes, but for the most part, you, you know, it's our footprint significantly reduced, um, as well as we were able to do um, disaster recovery, which is a huge thing for, wow. for credit unions. Okay, so to take us back to kind of some of that decision point. So first of all, going P to V yeah. is a big change. And yeah. then you're going from, uh, you know, I'm, I'm physical servers with you know storage uh, and moving to a hyperconverged. So I mean, you went full in and jumped in uh, for multiple changes. Uh, can you walk us through a little bit of that process? You know what you looked at. You know why you made that decision. And you were pretty early on, on, on for especially from a SimpliVity standpoint. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I believe they they went general availability January of 2013. I started at the credit union February 2013, and by March April timeframe we had chosen. SimpliVity as the option to help us virtualize, you know, the, the equipment we were going to use to virtualize it. We, you know, um, 
we looked at all the different, you know, looked at three different solutions. One was SimpliVity, one was the typical um, EMC solution, so that had um, hosts and switches and sor storage oh my, and, and same with the, you know, what I, I like to, I, I likened more to a hybrid, which was nimble and regular hosts. Um, once we, knowing that we went to um, an Oracle, we had an Oracle database that, that is our, you know, core system, when we added, um, when we looked at doing that, everybody else doubled their their appliances to their host to, to help us get to that compute that we needed. Um, so we went from two and a half physical racks to three and a half physical racks with the other two solutions. Where SimpliVity, we doubled the memory and and everything seemed to work out pretty well. I mean, you know, knock on wood, so to speak. Yeah, so, so VM density was what, what, one of the yep. things that, that that really helped you. A Absolutely. Bunch. I mean, it, it, I think you know. Just from a, there was there was a lot of different benefiting factors. One was, um, you know, cost. Just from a licensing standpoint, it was a lot cheaper, um, and I was able to do DR. That that was a big thing. The you know the 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 budget was already set when I walked in the door. So, you know, when um, they gave me the option, when we saw all the stuff, and they were pushing off DR another year, knowing that how important disaster recovery is, and you know, business continuity in our in our position, we have to be 24/7, and you know. Um, this allowed us to do that. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm just curious, you know, what sort of risk was involved there? I mean, were you the one driving this and kind of putting yourself on the line here? Because if, you know, <coughs> moving from, you know, kind of a, you know, solution where, you, you know, you mentioned some big vendors out there, you know, you're probably not going to get fired if something, you know, True. doesn't go as opposed to, you know, buying a startup. Yeah, um, definitely a leap of faith. Um, we, we uh, you know, it was my ultimately my decision. There, there were a group of people that had the ultimate choice. I had to go in front of the board of directors and, you know, kind of, you know, tell them what I was thinking. Um, and for whatever reason, they they picked up what I was putting down and and they, uh, I don't know. I felt like I'd sell ice to Eskimos when I walked out of there because it was just one of those things that, you know, I can't believe that they, you know, this was a leap of faith for not only them but me, like throwing myself out there. I mean, I, I just come come off doing a, a refresh with the typical solution and it just, you know, we, we had to do, I wanted to see something different. And as a nerd, it, it, I was like, this is fantastic. Yeah. All right, Neil, so walk us through kind of the experience. So what, once you've got it installed, you know, were there any issues there? What about, you know, upgrades, expansions, uh, and, and the like, you know, what, what, what's it like uh, on, on this solution? Uh, it, you know, just like anything else, it's VMware. So it's, you know, we, uh, you know that makes it a lot easier to to digest. I mean, it's it's not like we had to learn a, a you know something brand new. Some of us, some of the, the the staff had to learn. It's the first time they'd seen it, but you know just from a virtual standpoint, it's so much easier to have everything on a single pane of glass, as everybody here can can attest to. I'm sure. Uh, but you know, basically the the upgrades. Uh, they're just like anything else. So we, we, they get certified in whatever version of VMware we're on, and we actually just did an upgrade to 5.5 vSphere, and uh, you know that seemed to go pretty well. We had to do an upgrade with SimpliVity for that, as well. and um, you know it's just like anything else. I think you know, I think looking longer term, it's okay. How do we refresh this stuff? And it's a it's a easier swap out as well. So we're getting to the you know we're in the three year range at this point. So. You know, equipment refresh is kind of in my mind right now at some point. To, yeah, to I guess for. one of the things we look at, traditionally from a storage standpoint, migration is one of the toughest things because yep. when you bring in something new, you know, getting off the old, getting onto the new, when you're adding new pieces, there's that constant, uh, you know, churn there and therefore, you know, we look at, you know, most companies will spend at least 30% of the overall cost uh, of a solution in those migration costs and, uh, you know, the, the kind of hyper-convergence of what we call server SAN, when I've got a pool of resources and it should be able to add nodes in, take nodes out, out. even if you do a refresh, you add the new piece and you pull the old, uh, it should be a lot more seamless and therefore it should, you know, it should work. You know, how, how true to reality is that? Um, well, so far, I, I, we, we haven't had to, to worry about that right now. We did end up adding two more Omnicubes this past year. Um, you, you know, we, we found that we wanted to do something like a, you know, I call it a VDI light. So it was RDS servers and we just needed more resources. Um, went to the board again and said, look, we, you know, we went from 30 physical servers to now we're at 65 virtual servers. I need more resources. So they basically, you know, because of it, it was so successful, they said, yeah, buy two more. Um, so we use that. So right now we have two clusters. They talk to each other, but they're yeah. just separated. Um, 
and and just the the performance level is still as good as any and they they talk we can migrate you know you can v motion back and forth so it's not like uh you know i i see something you know when we have to do updates for example for the omni cubes themselves we v motion everything onto one and then we update it and we v motion everything back so we know that everything runs on one or two omni cubes at the most it, we you know, you hedge your bets with the more redundancy you can get, so. Yeah, so uh, it sounds like, you know, you, you must have done a lot of homework trying to go to the board and understand what, what kind of hero numbers do you have as kind of utilization uh, <laughs> and, and efficiency of, of the solutions you're using? Sure, I think when we converted, it was under six terabytes of data, um, and because we've added so many servers and, and have now are able to offer so many different services to the members, um, you know, we're, we're probably right around uh, I think total we could we we have like 21 terabytes associate available to us, um, and we you know we're out of the whole whole cluster, um, and we are using we probably still have about eight or nine left, which includes about 11 petabytes of data backup, and that's because I was pretty anal about every two hours backing it up and and we keep those for forever it seemed and we're not supposed to do that i mean it doesn't it kind of defeats the purpose but um you know the i think we you, with unlimited storage at some on some level it, it was easy to do so now we're trying to manage that a little bit better um but they you know i i think um you know our efficiency day our efficiency numbers are, are really good i i think we're we're in the high 80 the 86 percent to to one for the for what SimpliVity uses for their efficiencies but our dedupe rate is um, between the the four in production, we we're about um, I, I believe it's forty percent to forty point one to one for dedupe wow. and compression is two point one to one. Okay, and, so. and what what what's your what what are kind of the main applications that you're using? Because that that's pretty high. Yep. Uh, you know rates of dedupe. Um, yeah, we uh, we actually have um, we run Oracle databases as our as our core core application database. We have ATM databases. We have SQL databases. I mean we have. Um, a lot of transactional information is bombarding these things over, you know, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. I mean, we, you know, because we're open technically 24-7, we have constant communication between our online banking provider and our core system and our core support. And, you, you know, everything seems to have been handled efficiency, efficiently enough um, with going with the Omnicubes. I mean, it was, it was nice to see that, you know, it wasn't a bad decision even a couple years later. Yeah. So, so Neil, I mean, you, you guys obviously weren't hesitant. You're one of the first customers uh, for SimpliVity, but what have you seen in the maturation of that solution over the last couple of years? Um, I think they, they, they have got more efficient in how they, they, they dedupe and compress. I was, a, you know, we were able to not have to upgrade our data line to be able to run data backups to, the, to our DR location or, or push across um, data there, uh, which was a, was a big thing now. Um, that, the that's one the thing way in optimization. Yeah, that's the way in optimization. So, so that was that was actually that worked. We didn't have to upgrade. We had a three meg pipe between VPN tunnel between us and our DR location, so we didn't have to really do anything there. Um, the one things that I like the like to hear that they're doing, and I I kind of have said that it's, it's it's been a downfall is the file level restore. Right now, that's available if you're on their latest and greatest version, which now we're going to be upgrading relatively soon. Um, but I, I think that's one of the things that I would have liked to see earlier on, more like a, you, you know, I think if you in, tied it in with Veeam, they're now bringing that in, which, you know, we didn't do. We just kind of, you know, the it's still better than tape. Ba restoring a backup or somebody lose a file, it's that kind of thing. But the file over restore, I think, will come into, into play more with Exchange. So re restoring that one email or something along those lines, that's where it would, that's where it'll help. And then for, from a financial institution, we, you know, data encrypt, uh, data at rest encryption is, is really one of the things that the, the Fed's looking at. So um, w they're offering that sometime in one of their new, new releases this year, which is one of those things that um, just from a security standpoint, we, you know, our members expect us to be as secure as possible and no breaches are going to happen to their data and that's what they expect. So, you know, we're trying to give that to them. All right, so Neil, uh, you know, if you, 
you know, we're talking to some of your peers, you know, what advice would you give them now that you, you've been through this experience, you know, what would you say to have them, you know, maybe that they wouldn't be prepared for, or things that they, that you said, okay, we did this good, or, you know, maybe we could have done this better. What advice would you give to, you know, your peers? Um, definitely pick the right, right, person to help you install it um, you, you know I, I think that there's so many more people to choose from now that it doesn't it, you know you find the right vendor to work with and and as long as you so, trust so them are you talking about a channel partner or are you talking about the, the, the vendor themselves that makes the technology no the cha a channel partner yeah, okay. yeah so they so tra use the right channel partner and um, you, you know one of the things that uh, I've done a few calls for the for simplicity that um, I, I would would like to see is was all this file level restore and, and so it looks like they they probably just listened to everything I said and, and put it into play now but you know that that's my god complex kicking in I guess that, <laughs> that they they're listening to me at all times but they um, no I, I think that I would um, probably up the RAM um, you know just do it make sure that the the box that you're getting is gonna you know it's easy you know well, it's virtual, so everything's easier to just add stuff to it and, and create the servers and do all that stuff. I think you, you really need to make sure you scale it out appropriately. Okay, um, are, 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 is your uh, company using any public cloud today? You talked about kind of the well, you know, web services that you have. Do you host everything yourself? or Everything's you know? in-house, yeah, okay. minus our, our website, so okay. that's hosted from our online service provider, which, okay. um, you know, but everything else is we, we host, you know, in, internally, okay. I think, yep. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, so Neil, have you been to this event before? Or? Uh, I went to the one in Maine over the summer, yeah. you know, Gritty McPubs. All right, that, so, gritty, so gritty gritty what, what do you find is kind of the, the value? What, what brings you to the user uh, groups and uh, you know, what, what do you get out of it? Oh, I think it's cool to see all the new technology. I mean, the, you can only read so much online and, and you know, it's kind of nice to see it. And, and, even, and then if you're interested, there's breakout sessions for you to be able to actually listen to and, and possibly ask a question or at least approach some of the, some of the, the vendors that while well, they're here. Um, you, know, I, you know, also making contacts with people, you, you know, I, I, you don't really see, you know, I can't go home and talk, geek talk with my wife. She's, she just like zones out and doesn't listen and there's not too many, people that want to do that, but if it's during the day and everything, you know, everybody says it seems to be a, a, a good atmosphere to collaborate with people and, and get to know um, different people, because I, I mean, I'm definitely the dumbest guy in the room, so it helps me to figure out who I can talk to and to, to help me figure stuff out. All right, so Neil, I've got one really important question uh -oh. for you. So, uh, you know, what do you think about the Patriots' chances here for, uh, you know, the, the, the rest <laughs> of the playoffs? Uh, the, I know they're going to win, so yeah. the, they... I, are they going to go all the way? I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Trophy Come number on. five. Trophy number five. All right, well. We'll have a big parade. All right, Neil, we, we, we've got this uh, on record, so, you know, <laughs> when, when, when the Patriots, uh, you know, have the parade and, uh, you know, Brady and Belichick, you know, ha have their fifth trophy, you're going to be able to point back and say, uh, you know, I, I, I called it. So, yeah, uh, I got my style from Bill Belichick, so. <laughs> Absolutely, Not just got to cut, cut the sleeves off. I got to cut the sleeves, so. yeah. <laughs> all right, well, Neil Reardon, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, we'll be back uh, wrapping up our coverage of uh, the VTUG 2016 Winter Warmer, thanks so much for watching. This is theCUBE.